Hi, YouTubers. Uh, my cousin inherited this uh, Chicago Electric uh, 95136 plasma cutter and uh, decided that uh, he had a little job and wanted to use it. And uh, he, uh, would turn, he turned it on and uh, you'll see here the display display would light up and uh, he'd, get, he'd get ready to try to do some cutting and it wouldn't it couldn't get anything out of it he'd uh, it pulled the trigger and uh, you could see some stuff would turn on like on the uh, the amp display and uh, but he could, could never get a plasma so I tinkered with electronics for a while in my life and you want to know if I'd take a look at it so I said sure so he brought the thing over and uh, I set it up on the workbench and didn't really think even about uh, put, putting, any, putting any air to it. I just connected the power and, uh, and it, it wouldn't even do uh, what he said. Uh, <clears throat> the lights would come on but I couldn't, the ammeter wouldn't work and all that. So I eventually found out that uh, these units absolutely uh, must have air pressure on them. As a matter of fact, this is an air pressure switch. So if you're going to work on these, that's something to keep in mind. Um, I did some checking. You, you have to have at least uh, 30 pounds of air pressure on that switch for really any, any of the other things that need to operate in this machine to work so that that's something that uh, that you want to you want to keep in mind well after I got the the air pressure hooked up on the machine um, I became curious about this switch over here and uh, I had read on the internet where or had seen on the internet where when you when you turn that switch on that should uh, flow air you can flow you can flow air through your head to cool it like if you've been doing some long cutting jobs and it gets hot and you want to cool it down and uh, I just it wouldn't work so he had the schematics for it I started looking over the schematics and uh, it it turns out that right here is the uh, you've got a uh, your a solenoid valve let me see if I can zoom that zoom that in a little better and uh, that solenoid valve his actually had the coil I'd had an open circuit in it now you can take I was able to take four screws out of here pull that off get that coil off and uh, just for the heck of it I, I unwound that coil and interestingly in the right almost at the exact opposite end of that coil uh, the, the wire had actually it actually burned open uh, you could measure the resistance and I was getting like almost like like half half a mega ohm like 500k and uh, uh, so I, I knew that wasn't right so anyhow I was able to rewind the wires uh, on that coil and put it back together and uh, powered the thing up and son of a gun it just it it uh, it, it worked beautifully but uh, after I got it working uh, I thought I would uh, share with you guys uh, just a few things uh, that I learned about it you know one of them being that's real critical you've got you've got to have air on this thing I mean I'm gonna back, back to zoom out a little more again here let's see what's interesting about this particular machine is that it has what's called a pilot arc and it uses what's called the the blowback starting system and when I show you this uh, you, you're going to realize why having uh, air pressure on this thing is so absolutely uh, important now this is called this is this is like a retainer for I guess uh, for the for the nozzle and you, you have you have the nozzle here and you can and this is called a swirl ring and this is actually a replaceable uh, replaceable tip and uh, it's kind of hard to see 
but there is some some brown looking plastic here that separates the rear part of this brass part from the front part and you can also see let me zoom in here a little more there's two spring loaded little plungers now when you put when you put this thing together that that this brass ring makes a circuit across here that's connected with wires uh, to your trigger inside this handle you have your main current carrying lead it goes up here to what they call the electrode there's also a red wire which hooked up hooks up to some circuitry in there and that goes into what helps this unit work and when this design it's called a blowback start what happens is is when you pull this trigger it opens that solenoid valve I told you that was bad and this this tip you see it go in and out that that withdraws uh, that tip from here and that that is that opens up there's like there's an, an igniter voltage in there about um, probably I think it's around 125 volts or so that creates a spark in there that spark is what it starts the ionization process in in the air so you can see why it's with without without air on one of these I mean absolutely nothing uh, is going to happen uh, interestingly uh, if if you pull the trigger and the arc is not on you'll measure about about 2.2 volts uh, DC like if I was to turn it on and, and just measure the voltage right across here it's about 2.2 volts um, measuring in inside the machine with the the uh, machine actually running there's about 125 volts DC uh, uh, across between the electrode and that nozzle when you've got that little that little bright bright blue uh, pilot arc that's uh, coming out of there okay up here more towards the front of the machine there's another there's like it a kind of some 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 coils and inductors in here so this one's got a it's a blue and black wire you can see that kind of goes in that tube well the set that tube goes in the middle of what they call a current sense coil and in there is a reed switch if you're not familiar with a reed switch it's a little glass tube that's got a couple of small switch contacts in it and a magnet or an electromagnetic current will trip that purpose of that is is when you when you pull the trigger on that torch if this machine does not sense that it's actually generating a like a a, a, a fair amount of cutting current it will turn off the the drivers that produce the current and uh, it, then it'll just you'll hear it, 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 it will blow air for about 20 seconds after you turn it off but uh, that's something that maybe if it wasn't working right you might look for you may need to pull pull that reed switch out and uh, check that so that's one thing I want to show you also it's a it's a little bit hard to see but up on top here and marked on the schematic I think they call it uh, FL1 there's a really a large fuse that sets on top of there uh, a 50 amp fuse and of course you know if you that fuse would be something to check of course if, if that fuse was bad you, you're not going to get anything out of there you know I probably even when you shorted that out uh, it's, it's not going to show anything. okay so now we're looking down at the top uh, looking down on the top of the machine here's your got your power switch over here when you pull the trigger and uh, you start to do a cut I know for sure these two relays you'll see them energize and this one will also energize and I know for sure this is this relay is uh, what turns that air solenoid on and off you can you can actually watch it you can pull the trigger and then let off in exactly it at, at the 22nd interval when the air shuts off you'll see this one cycle this one is actually controlled by that reed switch that I was telling you about that the current 
current sensing switch that's in that current sensing coil. And uh, I was, I've actually verified that. I've operated the machine and uh, you, you, you can definitely see those. Um, over here, this is your main power supply board. Uh, I'm not so sure if you can see that. Let me let me take a look, and uh, we'll see if you can uh, if you can see where my fingers going. I was a little were off a little bit. I mean, pointed over here a little bit. This is your main power supply. You've got uh, your uh, uh, DC voltage coming out of here. This measures. This is 340 volts DC, and that goes down. To, it's a board that actually uh, generates the uh, this, this actually this is the actual what's called the inverter uh, in one of these machines you've got that 340 volts that, that goes in there and uh, when that machine is actually actually operating it uh, the the volt the voltage output on uh, this uh, what MT2 and MT1 that will vary from 187 volts AC to like when you have your front panel set for like 15 amps to my voltmeter only goes to 750 volts and it it will overload that voltmeter so I'm guessing it probably around a thousand volts or so uh, will 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 leave that leave that board. And go into go into this uh, this transformer right here. Also, let me see if I can get you a little little better view. Um, I'll show you this is this is this is one 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 side. That that's right there. That's. The, the two connectors on that that really that 50, that 50 amp fuse uh, that I was telling you about. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here I can tell you guys about. Um, I guess that's uh, pretty much it. One of the things they say also to look for, I read on the internet, if they if they're not working correctly, is uh, they think the the the, the wires uh, they can they can. Uh, the wires can pull off these uh, switch handles, and they said that's definitely, definitely something to, to uh, you know, to keep in mind. Well, I think um, I pretty much shared with you most what I what I figured out about this thing. Um, on that torch handle, um, if if you if you take all this apart and you and you and you jumper uh, across those two pins and take your voltmeter on there with with nothing connected, I was actually measuring about 269 volts open circuit in there, and like I say, that that's without that uh, that nozzle on there. Now with the machine welding, I went in and put a voltmeter across the actual leads that feed these handles, and with with the the pilot arc burning. I was getting 125 volt DC. Now I think when the machine actually cuts and you get plasma going, I think I've seen on the back of it they they say that it. Uh, I think it'll put out like maybe maybe 90 volts or uh, something like that. So I um, I hope that I've uh, maybe come up with a little something that that can help you guys uh, with your troubleshooting, uh, especially. Uh, knowing that front that front panel air switch definitely if you've got air pressure on this machine at least 30 pounds and that solenoid's working when when you flip that front panel switch uh, you should uh, you should definitely uh, get hunt, get 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 the full airflow through that machine if not that'd be a good place to start and I would uh, I would uh, check that solenoid uh, that, that we talked about so all right youtubers um, Good, good luck. Good luck with your troubleshooting. Oh, by the way, this little machine, I was able to, uh, to I cut, I cut uh, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, and uh, and regular steel with it. Uh, and it, it's they claimed it had about about 40 amps of power. It had uh, 
I had it cranked up uh, about right in the middle and was uh, easily able to cut a three-eighths a brass rod, just, just take it right off. And then I just messed around and trimmed, trimmed, easily trimmed off and rounded some corners on the end of a seven-eighth steel bar. And unlike a cutting torch, uh, you, you don't really have to preheat it. That, that plasma is so hot. It just it it just it just starts cutting. So it look, looks like a pretty nice little machine. All right. Well, good luck with your troubleshooting. Bye.